Hi everyone, welcome to the Matrix Oracle. My name is Audrey. This is your forecast for this full moon in Virgo. So February 24th, 2024. We have such amazing energy. So if you're looking at all the sacred geometry, by the way, I add more than the planets. I add some dark, sacred, wild feminine energy asteroids part of the mix and when we're going to tap into the detail of this energy you'll understand why this is powerful you guys let's get started so the way that i like to do any type of reading birth charts and things like this as i look at the story by starting from the beginning where do we start is at the first house so right away ishtar the asteroid of the sacred feminine energy, Aphrodite energy, how you're going to use your feminine potential is in the first house, in the last degrees of Capricorn. This is all about getting out of your mental prison. I love this message right off the bat because this is what I received as far as having to realize with this full moon energy that maybe some of the things that you wanted did not manifest in the past because you were still feeding as well your survival mode or survival mode character and that now you need to kind of abandon those versions of yourself, stop pl splitting yourself, especially because with Pluto in Aquarius here in the first house, your energy is and your potential and you receiving that main character, that channel of, of this um, pure bonded energy is really coming from the law of resonance. So your thoughts, your emotions, your desires, and it's followed very <laughs> fast with a conjunction between Mars and Venus. And that means feminine, masculine, how you think, how you feel, is going to feed this energy and you have the sacred energy of the feminine right now in this first house energy that is feeding you the opportunity to really realize where uh, the other shoe is falling so you can course correct okay now you see like those very strong dotted 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 green lines okay they go smack into the moon, so that full moon energy that is in Virgo, next as well, and hitting also Thuban. Thuban is part of the dragon constellation. This is the head of the dragon. This is a lunar year of the dragon. Some of you, if you resonate with dragon energy, dragon energy, you have to experience it to know it or feel interested to know it. This is your kundalini, your life force, all activated and really uh, unleashing your truth potential. You need to work with this energy, especially on the matrix with the current <laughs> uh, constriction that we are living under with the matrix and what we want to manifest as a soul collective. Uh, to have a lot of compassion, humility, drop the ego, to have access to this potential. So here, a lot of, especially with this combo here in those degrees of Aquarius, we're going to get a lot of higher insight, like almost like physical, philosophical, uh, like in like aha moments, okay? So be ready with this energy and over the next few days or arriving to this few days um, that you're going to be like maybe uh, encountering certain quotes, certain authors that are going to spike up certain things that um, could be of the essence to help you with transcending those versions of yourself that were created out of survival okay now you see there's a lot of energies and the next one so we call them stellium a lot of energies same houses sometimes also same zodiac sign a lot of pisces energy here we have mercury the sun saturn this whole little cluster here okay also in direct opposition, obviously full moon, with 
the head of the dragon. And that means also like the head of the dragon is how you govern yourself. Who's governing your life? And that means if it's your mind and your mind is feeding itself with negative thinking patterns or, you know, any type of uh, fear-based decision, you're going to have a cosmic event with this full moon that is going to support you to see, illuminate those aspects of yourself. Here, I love those placements. There's all about change with displacement of Mercury, metamorphosis. That means like you're able to look at the past and present self and morph a lot of caterpillar to butterfly type of effect that could happen. Saying this, I'm thinking also and feeling the butterfly effect. So some of you, if you haven't seen the movie, maybe that's a hint for you. Butterfly effect, you know, kind of like this ripple effect on how you think and feel and how it can really shift timelines. This is a quantum leap year with a leap day, okay? So a lot of us, we have this opportunity with this energy so close to each other um, to quantum leap. Um, here, the sun is in a position with Saturn that is connected to the ancestors. And that means, especially for some of you, realize is your ancestral knowledge, their versions of yourself, your past self that comes here and is trying to communicate with you to give you back certain ways to end certain subconscious cycle. Because you see here, this is like feeding this little line with Neptune here um, in the last degrees of Pisces. We're trying to end certain cycles and going back to the power here. Third house, North Node and Chiron together in Queen Kongs with Nyx. Okay, and also a little bit that cluster. This is the degree of Aries that speaks of your power, your initiative. And this full moon is so powerful in terms of you and us understanding what version and what little details, whether it's a th specific thought or a specific feeling, a, a way to wire it all, you know, that needs to be changed, okay? You're like a very complex uh, mechanic, you know, biological quantum mechanic, and you're going to have insights about what needs to shift. And here, especially with Nyx, Nyx is the goddess of the night and is going to help you. Oh, now I understand. I'm going to be using the Night Goddess Tarot. <laughs> I was like, why am I <laughs> pulling this? Um, she helps with um, seeing the higher truth. There's a lot of divination that comes with Nyx. There's a lot of potential through using astrology. So I'm glad that you're here. Um, now, still in the third house. So we're getting all this communication through a connection to the past self. Whether it's in this lifetime, past lifetime, you're going to feel it at your core, okay? No matter what level of communication you've reached with yourself, with your um, spirit team and things like that. We have Jupiter next to the Imun Koili, okay? This line here, that means that's in your inner world and this is about love. And that means like, if you're feeling unloving towards yourself when you finish your day, that's going to be a catalyst to you doing some type of inner work because this energy, it's almost like if you're feeling loving, you're going to freaking expand and just feel so amazing. And with Uranus just there, a lot of things that uh, maybe limited you, especially from uh, family lineage, how you felt in your family, how you felt perceived in your family. You see here, especially with this connection direction, right away with an opposition with Kali, okay, there is here this, this opportunity to feel different about ourselves and really transcend all version of unloving and conditioned love uh, of the self. So you're going to really feel this one as far as when you close the door, when you have energies around this little cluster, this is really potent. Now, Medusa in the self-expression house, in the degrees of Gemini, that is about 
sovereignty that is about miracles and that means that if you're feeling stagnant in your energy and this is where kundalini comes okay your any type of stagnancy is going to reveal to you look at this quincunx with the rising okay that's who you're becoming this is where you're allowing your soul to come in um if you're in quincunx energy it's almost like there's some type of gatekeeping with this energy and you want to be in alignment with yourself. Otherwise, you're going to feel the energy heavy as sh Okay? All right? So there's always signs where we're wearing off alignment. Anxiety is a big one. Uh, feeling overwhelmed is a big one. Under the water, everything going too fast. You're not able to follow. Okay, you have a lot of energies for this full moon that is all from first to third house mainly. Okay, and what that means, it's all the beginning of creating the character in esoteric astrology. This is like where you receive the sacred avatar. This is the aura. So this is kind of the egg, the shell. This is where you let yourself vibrate and have that space for that energy. And then there's this communication between what has been created and that energy that is swimming, that we're swimming in. So you see here, there's just like a lot of concentrated energy, quincunxes towards this energy that we're not escaping for the greatest good. Because this is like, this is almost like a collective cosmic i wouldn't say that invitation because it's almost like this is this is strong it's almost like have you tried that cocktail <laughs> just let me make you taste this okay and again you guys if the full moons especially full moons they're feeling heavy as okay or as okay it's because there is this awareness, higher awareness, and this work. You're supposed to go with this in a space of celebration. And this is why I do also all the transit to the cosmic, you know, like Mercury entering Pisces, the sun entering Pisces, all of this. Because in the past, I used to struggle as, as well. And I was like, I need, there must be a way. <laughs> there must be a way to make this process easy. And the way is just to kind of follow what those planets, which are master teachers, they are just like imagine Earth. Earth, we are carrying a consciousness. Like each planet is carrying a consciousness for itself, whether there's life on it or not. There are lessons and that's part of our ascension that's part also of us becoming a cosmic citizen being part of, beyond the solar system and some of you maybe you're not interested in it but that's where we're going <laughs> collectively now you're seeing here this energy this full moon with the head of the dragon with nyx goddess of the night and also lilith all in eighth house don't run. <laughs> Don't run. We are shining the light on the shadows. On the shadows that are limiting you. Okay? And that means here with Cali in those degrees of um, Scorpio, in the 10th house, this is for your higher purpose. Some of you, if you're feeling like, oh, I'm not finding my purpose, I don't know where my life is taking its direction, or what am I meant to be doing, or why am I here, putting the light on your own shadows right now, and hearing those messages, and, and, and kind of like wanting to commit to be present for what you feel every day, is part of your purpose. And... There's going to be a lot of destructuring there. There's going to be a lot, and I love this, and I'll let you know why. Because there's a lot that's being achieved on the spiritual realm, the spiritual level. Because there's multi-layers there. And it's showing that it's such a strong cocktail on the spiritual layer because it wants to gate a safe gatekeep. You know, any type of bypass, bypassing from the ego. So take advantage 
of this energy. Now, you have here also a lot of sacred geometry that I don't want to skip because I love sacred geometry. Um, and this is a mystical rectangle. Let's talk about this. Some of you, if you have one, you'll know what that feels like. Okay, that looks like you're cool as a cucumber and uh, inside it's not at all what you're experiencing, but people won't see it. Okay, and we have that. We have that going on. So some of you, while you're going through those energies and you're wondering why others might not be asking how you're doing or not seeing that a lot is happening to you or not connected to, everyone's going to really have this energy within themselves and whatever needs to be shifted that is going to occur, okay? This is creating almost like, um, how do you call this in English? Mm, the steam thing? <laughs> it just builds the pressure, pressure cooker, okay? Pressure cooker effect. Now, we do have here, I love this, especially as an astrologer, because Goddess Nyx does work with astrology. She's feeding this line with the rising so that means you and your becoming and those degrees of capricorn here the rising the placement is about mental focus so you putting your focus on wanting to know about thyself and and, and understand yourself and especially feeding uranus here in the degrees of taurus that is speaking of uh, you know, giving yourself a second chance for experiencing more, more love, more joy, more fullness in your life. You're going to find it because this is sacred geometry that flows. So astrology, looking at your shadows, looking at how, especially in those principles, like what are the things you need to work on? You know, astrology is great because it shows you in your chart the things that your soul wanted to learn. And it's not about being cursed or gifted. You have both. It's just a matter of perce perception and how you perceive your own challenges. Okay. Now, one thing that I'm just seeing and we'll end up here before we go on to the collective and elemental readings. Okay. We're going to go first with earth element. After earth, we'll do air. After air, uh, we'll do water. And after water, we'll do fire. Okay, all this for your moon sign. I'm seeing this. <laughs> I know this one very well, too. It's a T-square. So you see uh, Mars and Venus going to the midheaven. So your public life down here to Jupiter. So inflated effect back. Okay, so this type of like 90 degree on both sides and opposition. This, if you have any type of explosion with others or some type of feeling frustrated, infuriated, angry between your relationships or men, men, women, masculine, feminine principles, okay, this is because there's something that needs to change. And you might notice it through others first because of that connection to your public life. But realize that it's because there's something inside of you, the fourth house, in your home, in the way you build the structure and design of your main character that needs to shift in terms of divine harmonious union let's call it that okay all right this is what i have that sounds so exciting all right let's go and check the elemental placement so first earth remember check out your moon sign all right see you there if you were born with a moon in an earth placement so moon taurus virgo or capricorn those messages are for you additional to the astrology so we have a rune here a gift gable shape as an x so let's see how that works out <laughs> for us we have the dragon the conjurer 
Number 22. Did we talk about this quantum leaping here? I feel I want to give this to the dragon. Mm -hmm. The monarch, which is the emperor. Or, em well, emperor, but it's all goddesses' energy here. Codependency and passion. Connect. I create strong emotional connections with the important people in my life. Interesting with those two cards. Then we have the shaman, the rainmaker. Oh my lord. So in alignment with some of the reels I started to create. Okay, let's put this there. And for frequency, but the way... You'll want to work with the moon activation frequency. This is the back of your third eye. But I also wanted to pull another card. We have ending energy and desire entanglement. I feel like this is in relationship to this. Okay, let's first read all of this, you guys. All right. So with this full moon in... A placement that is very activating of your dragon energy, which is a connection to the life force within you that is always in motion. There is this message of the conjurer. Now, I would like to read this for you because it's a powerful message. It says... Joseph Campbell advised us not to settle for the way things have gone with others, but instead to unfold your own myth. This takes vision, dedication, and will. To conjure is to call upon the invisible to make itself manifest. To assist in the manifestation, we must understand that what we think on grows. You want magic? Pay attention to magic. You want empowerment? Praise empowerment everywhere you see it and ignore the places that make you feel small or weak. You want love? Celebrate love everywhere you go. Conjure the truest and most beautiful version of your own life by adoring everything in your path. You will find true and beauty. Start with your own dragon soul. Wow, this is definitely a powerful dragon activation. You guys, some of you, if that's something you're interested in, I do have... A special offer for dragon energy reading okay to get you started with this I'll send you a lot of knowledge about this and where this energy works and how it works in your natal chart so what I'm seeing here with a natal earth moon placement and that means also for us collectively um, there is this awareness of starting to work with energies as if we're focused more on what we want to manifest especially here with the emperor or the monarch there's this call to work with source and that means your own source it, but it's, you know, like the shaman, they were, especially there's a full moon energy behind. Or maybe there's a new moon. Yes, maybe it's a new moon. So here with, this is so interesting. I just released this morning something, a reel about the sacred geometry of water within the body. And the ones you see are tears under microscope. The reel is 42 seconds. That's why I'm just... Uh, amazed. This is about divine order in the angles of the zodiac. This is the last degrees of Libra. So that means like 
organizing all that you've mastered about your subconscious and working with the moon here, it's like you're harnessing more of the power of the invisible to work with your own source energy and the extension you have to source. Okay, so you in a limited vessel is connected to a greater, this infinite source energy. Now, do you see here, we seem to have some struggle with maybe in the way we used to connect with others. So some of you, there might have been tendency to be codependent in your relationships. And we're bringing an end here. Um, ending energy entanglement and desire, energy and desire entanglement is the super empath playlist. Okay, if you want to work with this, working, when I give you things to work with, it's because sound is vibration. It's a type of magic. So if you're someone that wants to start with playing with magic, sound is a great vibrational <laughs> master, okay? A teacher. It will show you the way to manifest the invisible into the visible, all right, let's pull some more cards as far as a further message for this. Okay. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> All right, the Fool and the Ten of Cups in reverse. I feel that... First, I would like to tell you, I do feel that this reading is going to be rather short because a lot of things that you're meant to harness there I'm giving you clues and hints, but you're meant to receive it through the sounds, which I'm very happy to be providing those sounds because there's so many words I could use to kind of tap into the collective. But when you have certain hints and clues, then you have the sound to support it. You'll be able to find your own edge. And what I'm seeing here is that it's saying that you have and you've had to experience certain maybe codependencies that were from what you inherited, okay? And maybe living on the edge. Um, but this is a time here with this full moon that you're stepping towards a new door, okay? And I feel like some of you you wanted to manifest a certain expression of family that was different and maybe experience soul family. That's so interesting because in the Virgo, in the degrees that are, let me see, 15 to 20 degrees in Virgo, this is an angle that speaks of family that speaks of this type of connection. I feel that you, especially with a moon earth placement, you probably had to experience and connect with people that were putting you in an entanglement wheel, you know, uh, that you may have felt stuck with, but now you're ready to see the truth beyond. You probably wanted to experience a different type of love at a soul level and feel family through not just blood but through the things almost like the I feel I don't know where this comes from the rituals you know it's almost like some of you maybe you have this healer within the shaman within and you wanted to join at a soul level with people that work with energy in that fashion, that wanted to dance to the rain, that wanted to honor the planets, the sun, you know, and find this. And maybe you were stuck in the old framework of family. And now there is a lot of wisdom that you're going to receive from this. The wisdom from the things that ailed you, ached you, your tears, you might have some review about those tears, okay? So you can release it and reframe the architecture of your sacred water within, the sacred geometry within the water. You're mainly made out of water, okay? 
with source. That's amazing. Thank you so very much, my earth element. I trust you receive what you needed at this time. If you need personal guidance, please look in the description box. Namaste. If you were born under an air moon, that means a moon Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, those messages are for you in addition to the astrological messages. So we have here a rune, Fehu, that is about wealth and abundance. Let's see what we have next. The dragon of the shadows, the shadow. Interesting. Stay with me. We're going to first pull all the cards and be patient with those messages. <laughs> the Six of Cups. Give your relationship a chance. You had a little bit more of love cards here. Pay attention to the red flags. And it is safe for you to love. Nurture. I open my arms and wrap around those that need nurturing, starting with myself. The owl. Beautiful to work with the shadows here. Remember, this new, uh, this full moon is placed with a lot of energy, dark feminine energy in that eighth house. The psoas frequency healing. It's almost like there's something inherited here. And it is wise. Once you're able to, I would say almost here, go beyond your fears. Some of you, you may still be scared of your own shadow. Let's read the interpretation of the shadow here in this little booklet because it's a really nice message. It says, If you carry a big light... Oh, my! sorry, I had to interrupt my left ear. Just reach a certain frequency. Wow, this is interesting. So left ear, feminine. There's something you're going, you're about to hear in this reading. If you have an air moon, that's just going to bring you to another level of abundance. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it left me. If you carry a big light, you're going to cast a large shadow. And you must own both. Endeavor in this moment to understand what shadow elements are at work. Be diligent not to project onto others your own fears, inadequacies, or resentments. This is your opportunity not to abandon any part of yourself, including your own darkness. Own all of it. Take responsibility for your shadows and the limitations you've put on yourself. Accountability is part of true power, as any dragon knows. I'm going to take a little break just to open the door for my little black kitty that wants to enter. All right, Abigail, coming. Right in back, I left the door open. I live with a lot of animals, dogs, cats, chicken, and I received already some messages for you as far as this. Maybe some of you, you have six, <laughs> six house energy that is being activated so something in your chart related to your connection to animals which is found in the sixth house the six of cup is a confirmation here maybe there's also i know it's not for everyone some of you if you've had the experience of losing a dear pet of yours um there might be some connection they might be communicating with you that could also be with uh, people that pass just because of that eighth house energy as well and the owl. 
So I would say with this air moon placement natally, be open to greater communication to support this. And with the nurture, I would say being in nature, but especially if you do have pets, spending time with them. Be go beyond the communication of just your own words and try to receive the feedback of your own pets here. There's something at a heart level. Some of you, maybe because it is safe to love, maybe some of you, you close the doors of feeling uh, more emotionally available to all and you kind of just protected yourself from human relationships and went towards um, animals. It's not for everyone, but it seems to be something that could play out also because of your chart. So I would suggest to look it up. And some of you, if you never had your chart read, that would be a great suggestion at this time. All right, let's get some more messages. I feel uh, those those messages here for this full moon, I feel are a little bit shorter because a lot of the things that you're meant to receive, you're going to receive through the frequencies. This one, the SOAS frequency healing is, let me write that down, in my survival kit for empaths. Okay, I'll just put it like this, survival kit playlist. Okay, um, this could be to the point, like the, the way that I perceive this energetically, some of you may be, you know, when you're having conversation with people and something is going on with you, especially maybe you're dealing with some emotional family patterns within or actually without that are obvious that you're struggling, but it's like it makes you a little bit like reactive you know it's like someone is like hey how are you and you're like what what do you want <laughs> short short fused okay there's something here about maybe understanding your shortcomings okay thank you for <laughs> the translation because i was like where am i going where this okay understanding your shortcomings especially with the shadow is going to give you success and abundance. There's wealth there, okay? I used to have this, and I do not have an air moon. Um, when I was dealing with chronic pain, I would not, it, it was years of my life. It was over 15 years. I was not gonna talk about my pain physically all the time, but I did have to notice that sometimes when I was trying to contain it, I would be short-tempered with others. And I feel as some of you, having the compassion, okay, for yourself to listen to your body, okay, especially here, so asked, you know, it's like the womb, the six of cups, something from childhood, for something from other lives also. Pay attention to those patterns and nurture them. Give it healing. Some of you, I'm very happy to tell you, I'm going to be releasing, it's going to be accessible to everyone, a pharmacy, a vibrational pharmacy. So you can work with specific type of ailments, not just the emotional one, even though that's something I really like, but some things that have manifested so far deep within ourselves that it's in the body, in the bones. And I feel as some of you, there is something here with the bones. I'm hearing a weird thing about ride or die here. Some of you watch, maybe you've had the tendencies in the past to be too either all in or not in at all. Okay, a little bit extreme. And it's a time with this moon where you're going to be able to integrate those two aspects. I feel this is, this is where the abundance is going to come and it's going to help you shine through. You're going to want to listen to the moon frequency to be able to receive activation from the back of your third eye, okay? You could work with both. I do believe, if I use, I can't remember right now, maybe it's a purposeful that I'm not remembering, but if there is a mantra 
in this frequency, maybe you want to use it in the moon frequency. And if not, or, and or, you can use the mantra of the moon in the psoas frequency. That means you're calling in the moon energy to activate the back of your third eye while you're connected all the vertebrae and parts of your body. Yeah, that feels like really powerful just mentioning this. All right, just a couple of additional cards and we already have a lot of messages. Wow, this is a mess. <laughs> I'm sorry. It feels like there's a lot of entanglement. Okay, some of you just like in my survival kit, you might want to look at other ones, okay? Um, the quantum fascia healing playlist even because it's connected to the waters. You see how she's connected here, the whole bottom part. Quantum fascia healing could be in addition here. So we have the queen of swords and just before we have, yes, 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 ten of swords. You are going to find the truth, the many truth. Oh my God, this is just going to be like such a, you know what? I feel that some of you, you were lost in soul fragmentation. So fat fragments retrieval could be also something you want to play with if you've had a lot of trauma. Because this is a perfect alignment for you to shine the light of illumination, especially through that full moon effect, and to see the higher truth of those many timelines, many cycles, repetition, maybe why you incarnated in a specific family for you to understand at a soul level specific, specific lessons, especially about nurture i would say even six house so maybe it has to do knowledge on how to care for pets for children to be of service to others overall maybe health as well okay all right that's what i have for you my dear air moons thank you so very much i trust this has supported you if you need personal guidance look in the description box below Namaste. If you were born under a water moon, so moon, cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, those messages are for you in addition to the astrological star map reading. Okay, so we have here manas, a rune that speaks of creativity, skill, ability. Almost feels like a, a doorway, a gateway. Hmm. Then you have, ooh la la, the wish maker. Okay, this is interesting. I don't know why I want to put this just above her head. When I said the gate, I felt some type of like gate keeping, gate safe keeping, something about maybe making sure you harness your creative field. But let's pull all the cards, Audrey. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Sorry. The Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Water here is intense, deep, full of riches. Engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Okay. We only have one card for this one. Acceptance. I overcome my biggest challenges by accepting what is. Maybe a little bit different here. The child. Interesting. Having more fun for sure. And the yang fre frequency healing. Let me list and read for you all the organs. Stomach, large and small intestine, bladder and gallbladder. Okay. All right. Let's first read this dragon message. The wish maker. Because it feels so um, 
mysterious. <laughs> okay. When was the last time you let yourself make a wish? With open eyes and a clear view on reality, but also open heart and palms. Are you ready to receive your dream come true? Dragons don't hold back their desires, but we, as humans, often keep ourselves from wishing and hoping in order to avoid disappointment. Today is a day for wishing without holding back. Have a conversation with the moon. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a wish on a falling star. Put a bright, shiny gift of hope under your pillow and dream with the dragons. Sorry, I'm really like a child. I cannot, I cannot hold myself. I'm, I'm too expressive for this. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting with the gatekeeping. So the archetype of the gatekeeper, the grid worker, is Aries. Okay. I know we're reading for the moon uh, in water. But maybe some of you, you have a certain fire placement. Okay. Especially in Aries that could be at play. Now... As I'm channeling this event, there is, and we saw it in the star map, there is the North Node and Chiron, both together in Aries, in the degrees that speak of power, your initiative, you being able to go after what you want. And I feel here, there might be something about a healing that needs to occur Okay, I have the whole message, but let me see how I'm going to explain it. It's like some of you, you've tried to make those wishes and you feel like you failed. And you may have lost your commitment to go after certain dreams because it did not pan out the way you want it. I'm going to give you a very easy example. When I was in 15, I decided to become a singer. I went to music school, college, okay, and I went on touring and I became a singer professionally by the age of 19. I started doing all those things, the casting, the events, okay, not to the degree of what you see on TV, but I was doing it and I really felt like a jukebox. A lot of things that happened that made me connect my passion for music to the business aspect made me lose the love for it. I didn't like it that way. It didn't fit what I wanted. But my mind could not understand how to accept okay, my desire for something and how to get there. How? How do I get there? Because the child in me knew the music and the sound was really like, I wanted to deliver messages of not feeling alone in the struggle, of feeling loved and supported, because that's what I needed, okay? Now, I had years where I felt very bummed out about this desire for something and the materialized experience for it that was very contrasted. Then I had accidents, physically was you know, limited to not pursue this to that point because I was still trying to push. But I had other things to learn and now I'm composing music that is doing the exact things that I wanted but in a way that I had no freaking ability to ever conceive at the time. And through many years, I was not going to understand how to go about this and some of you this is where you're at and you might have also experienced just like my story lost the playfulness of your desire for example if it's money i want to earn this much per year but you're not having fun with the process of understanding hey first of all maybe where's your niche and maybe 
the niche doesn't exist because you're the brand, you're the energy of you learning how to be committed and how to accept the up and down, the success and the failures and how to understand how to be flexible on how to go about this process is your niche, is what is going to birth something that you want and you want it for a long time some of you many many moons some of you it's something you don't even realize you want it at a soul level so that means many lifetimes and only in your playfulness will you capture this okay let's get some more messages as far as your vibration you want to meditate with my moon frequency and some of you, you want to look at where this full moon that is helping you remove a lot of the shadows. And I'm not saying remove. It's almost like put the light on the shadows so you can integrate. You know, I had to integrate a lot of the pain of what I felt. And now I can laugh about it and smile like, oh, my God. I When I experienced a little taste of what... I thought I wanted as a singer, you know, being on stage and the people, I hated it. I had people like stalk me, people like find me in hotels and I hated that version. But I could not understand how my desires that were so big could be met and matched. You know it as soul level, but you need to create that space for it to speak to you. Okay, so moon frequency, work with the yang frequency healing. Go and check out in the 12 organ playlist all those uh, yang organs. And you can see in the description what type of energy they're supposed to attune and what type of signs you have if you are imbalanced. Because some of you, especially here, the small intestine is connected to passion and joy. So some of you, it could be something that you want to work just by itself is a small intestine. That's going to be up to you. And the same for your wishes to come true. All right, let's get a couple of more cards here. Yup. Oh, you get it. Wow. 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 Like, wow. You're meant to have it all. But it's the delivery now, I hope you like my little story here. The delivery, the packaging is meant to be different. Especially if you've, you know, tried and tried. You'll know what works. You're probably here to learn what works. You see in this pentacle wand. Okay, what works? What, where you shine? Where you ground your power? from the many lifetimes, from finding the many truth and untruth. But this is something that you wanted to learn at a soul level. So don't rob yourself from the experience. Allow your experience to teach you. Accept where you're at and trust that you are right now under cosmic energies that are going to bring you this awareness. All right, that's what I have for you. And if you're struggling, I do have personal guidance offers, whether it's recorded videos or one-on-one -on -one sessions, please check it out in the description box below. Thank you so very much. Namaste. If you were born with a natal fire moon, so that means Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, those messages are for you in addition to the astrology part at the beginning of this reading. So first we have this rune, El Was. This is about strength. This is about being dependable, being trustworthy. Okay, trust. There's something to trust here. Let's see what dragon energy you have. The fairy tellist. Interesting. A lot of wisdom with this energy. All right. I feel this one I want to keep above. Mm -hmm. Nymph of Cups. Interesting. C 
calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. Now, I love using this deck in terms of having hints about the level of self-love one needs to reach as if this union outside with others needs to be brought in. So here, I really feel like this is the lower self calling the higher version, you know, into manifestation. Something about stories, the stories you tell. Awaken. I awake feeling energized and begin my day with gratitude. I like that. Love waking up like that. <laughs> oh, and water. The number 61. I'm going to put this here. Now, for this, for the moon readings, you do have the moon frequency to work with. So you can work for activating the back of your third eye. It's very close to casual chakra. So there's a lot that you can see that is subconscious that is being revealed with every cycles of the moon. So I have this sun, um, sun and moon frequency available. You can work with this and, oh, interesting. Letting go of karmic and trauma bondage. This is part of, oh, now it makes sense. The quantum fascia healing playlist, okay? And why I say it makes sense is because this whole playlist I created was to help with the structured water. It's not H2O anymore. It's H3O. You, you start, it's almost as if like the water within your cells are telling you a story. And I would say here, if you're not waking up energized or if you have trouble sleeping, pay attention to your circadian rhythm and the body clock. What hours of the day do you feel energized or you feel low or you wake up in the middle of the night? It's connected to your meridians, to your organs. Each organs tell a story about a certain emotion, a certain energy. And that means if you wake up and you have struggle with certain things in your body, you're being revealed. Certain karmic bonds, and I'm, when I said bonds, I literally felt like financial bonds. I feel as some of you, you're clearing with this full moon. Some type of karmic debt. Let's read this. There's some type of mystery here that I'm feeling. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. Some of you, it's almost like, a, like your life might be, you might be a mystery to others if you have this, you know, a fire moon here. Yeah. It might be like mysterious to others. Maybe you have a certain aura about yourself. Let me see, number 34. Okay, Einstein once said, if you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. Now is the time to let yourself sink into the wonder and imagination of a good tale. Also, it's time to remember that your life is a fairy tale. As a myth maker, it's your job to remember that impossible things happen every day and that once upon a time is really here and now. There's power in your true life fairy tale. Live your tale today 
so magically that even the dragons have a hard time believing it's true. Love this. <laughs> very, very nice message, my fire moons. This is why you're being asked to stay almost like steadfast with being reliable, being dependable, showing up, but showing up as a version of yourself that is healed. And the version of yourself that is healed is the one that is always paying attention to how they feel because we're constantly in vibrational movement. And that means it's more about the awareness of how you feel. And it seems that it is very important for you. So let me give you just a little illustration here, like the shamans do, okay? I recently was called to do a lot of like, um, I will be releasing an album called The Pharmacy uh, on this YouTube channel for specific conditions, okay, that we develop. And the sounds are going to be raw. So I started to see that what I was eating in the morning and my timing about around my food and certain type of food would allow me to feel more receptive to communicating with my higher self. That's something I've already known in the past that I need to be light. Even when I was doing personal training, I needed to be light. The noise of my own body would be disturbing of my perception of other keener sense. I'm not saying like you have to starve yourself or always fast, but it's almost like just knowing your own, again, circadian rhythm. Be inquisitive. Look at the tale your body has been telling you because what works for Audrey doesn't need to work for you. But it is more about listening to the wisdom of the water. Some of you, okay, well, we are here with the, you know, the fire moons, but I feel that because it's spicy season, there's a lot of things that in this phase with this full moon that is going to come together. Pisces is the unifier. So the spicy season with a lot of water is going to help. Hmm, interesting. Some of you I'm hearing with inflammation. So whether it's inflammation that is manifest in your body or it's almost like putting out fires. Remember, I said something about the bonds. Maybe things that upset you, aggravate you, it, you know, make you maybe reactive. Maybe past stories. As you start looking at yourself as a fairy tale, as the tale that you want to tell, and you're calling in more of this, you're going to discover some of the things that need to be released. Work with the moon frequency to grasp what needs to be revealed in your body. Work with this. If I'm not mistaken, yes, there is some mantra. What I would recommend for you is to use the moon mantra while listening to this. Some of you, that's going to be super powerful. All right, let's get some cards pulled for this, and then we'll stop there. There was a lot of messages already in the astrology, so this is a little bit shorter, and especially because I feel as some of you, and I'm so glad... That now that I released the Planets Frequencies album, I, you can receive a lot of your own messages. And it's always been my purpose. Wow. Okay. Ace of Wands, Kundalini. You're going to be able to re remove some of the blockages. You saw how it was like crooked, misaligned. You're going to be able with this full moon, my dear fire moons, 
to rectify what was once misaligned. Maybe even some unfairness, but you had, it's almost like you had to experience a certain degree, okay? Maybe some of you have a lot of uh, squares in your chart, okay? You might have some sacred geometry that could be uncomfortable. That was purposeful, okay? There's going to be a strong realignment. There's something with the crown here. There's a blooming that's coming. Oh, wow. I mean, like, like look at this, the magician. You are discovering the power of your words, of your intention. Look at this. It's almost the same one. You see? Same. The power of your energy alignment, your health seems to be really important for you, almost like revealing to you what did you have to learn and how you're going to make this story a great fairy tale. All right, my dear fire moons, that's all I have for you. I trust this supported you. If you need personal guidance, look into the description box below. Thank you so very much. Namaste.